Hey everybody, so today I wanted to share a couple of thoughts with you about second opinions. Um, we all get second opinion requests from time to time. Um, I've had several in the past couple of weeks. Wanted to share my thoughts and opinions about second opinions. So thought number one is, uh, generally the reason for a second opinion is that the patient is pretty upset at something that's happened or, has, or they feel like it's something that hasn't gone well. And so you find a lot of uh, patients will come in requesting a second opinion with the frame of mind that they are wanting us to tell them that something was done poorly or incorrectly or a mistake was made. Um, so we have to be very cautious um, to dot our I's and cross our T's, make sure that you uh, follow um, protocols, um, accepted protocols, and make sure that everything goes according to plan with regard to how the patient interaction is executed. Um, I find that those patients that begin with frustration or come in with a frustrated attitude tend to be a lot more willing to complain whether it's online and social media or whether it's uh, you know regulatory bodies complaints or potentially you know going the next step and becoming litigious so that's always a concern thought number two is um, we need to be very cautious um, none of us is perfect you know, we try to provide the highest standard of care, the greatest, um, best long-term possible outcome for the patient. But sometimes things don't go as planned. I know for me personally, uh, sometimes an outcome or a, a crown margin or some procedure will end up not being ideal. Now in that situation, rather than pushing back and refusing to allow the patient um, a redo or a refund or a partial refund, you know, if I acknowledge that something has gone poorly, um, if I continue to push back and say, yeah, nothing's gone wrong here, then that long term can create some significant issues which will end up in the patient either becoming litigious or end up sending us into a, uh, you know, a tailspin from the standpoint of a board complaint, et cetera, et cetera. So if there is a mistake made, um, fix it. Uh, you know, if you've done something incorrectly, identify it to the patient um, as needed and fix the problem. You know, I had a patient this morning, and this is one of the reasons I wanted to mention this to you. I had a patient this morning, we're working on tooth number 32, it's a wisdom tooth, doing a root canal and a crown on tooth number 32, um, which has drifted into the position of number 31. Um, which this looks really weird because I'm looking at the picture here and it's a mirror and I'm like, wait, that's 18. So it's the patient's lower right, um, which this is my right side. Anyway, it's number 32 drifted into 31. So I designed a crown with a CEREC machine, put the crown in place, had the patient bite down, you know, big old space anterior. The patient couldn't close all the way. Um, something had happened in that design process. And I don't know what happened. I think probably what happened is the um, when I did the buckle scan, you know, she had 32, then she had a big space, and then, you know, 29, 28. Um, I think somehow the computer, when it did the correlation, brought the upper and lower together incorrectly, and so it designed the bite based on the incorrect buckle scan orientation, if you will. So she ended up with this terrible open bite. Now I could have spent, you know, 20 minutes and drilled the heck out of the bite at the top of that crown and eventually got her to close. But instead of doing that and creating a compromised situation, I took a step back, you know, slid my chair back, pulled my gloves off, my mask, slid around so I, I could look her in the eye and said, I'm sorry, there's something wrong with this crown. We're gonna redo it for you and we're gonna do it right now. Are you okay with, with spending another 45 minutes with us? Um, and she was fine with that. Now, fortunately for me, the schedule was open after that, so it didn't create any issues for me. But even if it was blocked up and, and you know, not something that I would have wanted to cram another patient in. Um, I went ahead, I would have gone ahead and done it for her, um, for any patient for that matter, to make sure that we got it right. Um, you know, patients literally are a little walking billboards for us when it comes to um, uh, creating a good positive patient outcome. So we want to make sure that they have a, a good experience and a good outcome. Um, anyway, so we ended up cutting the crown off. I re-imaged, redesigned, uh, brand new from scratch. Everything turned out great. Um, the occlusion was almost 
ideal on the second crown. And when I pulled them up side by side on the Cerec machine, you could see obviously one was significantly taller than the other, and I think that orientation on the buckle scan just wasn't ideal, it didn't quite work out for her. So, um, thought two there, you know, is to make sure that we acknowledge a mistake and correct it. Uh, you know, this same patient this morning was great. She wanted to talk to me before she left the office. Her daughter was there, and I was expecting something like, you know, when can I eat on this? Is this material strong enough? Can I eat now? Um, you know, it was a difficult appointment or something. She's like, I just wanted to say thank you and gave me a big hug. You know, it was nice. We kept her here for three and a half, four hours, which I don't like to do. Um, for a single tooth, generally we tr shoot for two and a half hours, um, but it ended up being, uh, you know, a nice positive outcome. And I'll certainly try to follow up with her tonight, whether it's a text or a phone call. Um, but in the end, things turned out really well for her. So if there is a mistake, an error, acknowledge it, correct it. Um, oftentimes, the acknowledgement of a mistake and the correcting of that mistake will solidify a long-term relationship with the patient because they are now aware that he's not going to try to sweep something under the rug. Um, he's going to fix this for me if there are any issues. Um, so thought number three is, um, I've heard this from many people. You know, my father-in-law um, liked to say that dentists tend, tend to eat their own young. Um, and I've seen that in my life. Um, I had a, um, a patient uh, complain uh, against me, complain to another dentist about me. Um, and the dentist, rather than calling me, um, basically told the patient that everything I had done in her mouth was wrong. Um, everything was poorly done, it was a mistake, nothing was necessary, it was over treatment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, ended up in a really nasty, ugly situation. And it could have been easily avoided with a simple phone call. You know, this patient had some issues with billing. Um, and created some very strong ill will between the front office and the patient. I didn't have any concerns with her personally. I try to stay out of that billing, um, any billing issues for that matter. Um, and so she went to see another dentist for a second opinion to see if she could get out of paying, I'm assuming. And it created a really nasty situation. Um, lots of ugly phone calls and letters and you know lawyers involved. Um, and in the end, uh, all it would have taken was this doctor to have called me up on the phone and say, hey, Dr. King, I've got so-and-so here. Uh, they've got some concerns with some of the work that you've done. Um, let's talk about it. And I would have been able to say, yeah, let's talk about it. I'd be happy to see. You know, we could go through, here's some of the concerns that I had. Here's why I recommended that treatment. Are we on the same page? What would you have done in this situation? Um, and here's how the procedure went. You know, I know, I can remember this very clearly, this patient um, had great difficulty getting them. We had her on nitrous oxide, it was up as high as I could go, you know, 70% nitrous, 30% oxygen. I'd given her multiple injections, we were working on both sides because she lived out of town. Um, and I wanted to stop the procedure, looking back I should have, um, but she wanted to push through it. And she was having a lot of pain during the process. So ultimately, we pushed through it, um, ended up being a, you know, a nightmare, as you know. Um, but I don't think I uh, overtreated. I don't think it was an inappropriate diagnosis. I think things went, um, the outcome clinically, aside from post-operative discomfort and pain, was appropriate. Um, it looked nice on the x-rays, and I could justify it based on the pre-op x-rays and photos. So this dentist decided, like I said, to throw me under the bus, um, told the patient that everything I'd done was wrong and incorrect, um, and in the end, that ended up in um, me settling um, a significant amount of money to get this patient to not sue me. Um, and it was a nightmare. I don't know how many nights of sleep I lost and um, how much stomach lining I, you know, burned up with all the worrying. It was terrible. Um, and all this in my mind, and granted I'm, I'm being a little simple about this, um, could have been prevented with an open and honest conversation with this doctor. So, all that being said, if you get into a situation where you've got a patient that comes in for a second opinion, be open and honest about what you see, but there's always two sides to the story. None of us are perfect. Um, none of us is perfect all the time. We can strive for clinical excellence all day, every day, and we should, um, but all of us have untoward outcomes from time to time. Um, always identify and correct your mistakes as quickly as possible. 
Um, and number three, do not throw other dentists under the bus. <laughs> you know, if there's something um, objective that you can identify, and I've done some expert witnessing um, with law firms in the past, if there's something objective that you can say, you know, based on what I'm seeing clinically, it looks like there could be something here, or this is consistent with, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's interesting, you know, if we if we tend to get our emotions into it and allow ourselves to get all frustrated and, and flustered, so to speak, things tend to go wrong. So I would suggest very strongly um, to avoid throwing other dentists under the bus. Give them a phone call. You know, you're always better off having a quick conversation with a, a, a provider, dentist or otherwise, um, before making a judgment call or making an inference or a supposition about treatment that was rendered that may not have gone as we hoped it would have. Um, in the end, we're here for the patients, right? You know, I'm not here to say that I'm better than anybody else because I certainly don't think I am. Um, I want to have patients that have a good long-term outcome, that um, are willing to come back and see me multiple times and recommend their family, friends, and coworkers, and provide a good, stable, healthy um, oral environment for them to smile with for the rest of their lives. So that's all I've got for you for now. You know, generally, like I said, um, most challenges can be averted with good communication, acknowledging mistakes, and not throwing each other under the bus. So thanks. Have a good day.